welcome to the Mint Report. This is our wrap-up of the day's business news. Here are our top stories. Mixed reactions emerge from the Ayodhya verdict. Government decides to close down inactive EPF accounts. And Mukesh Ambani is India's richest man. We start with the verdict on Ayodhya. On Thursday, the Lucknow bench of the Allahabad High Court ruled that the disputed site should be divided between the three parties. They are the Hindu Mahasabha, the Nirmohi Akara, and the Sunni Central Waqf Board. The court also said Hindu religious idols currently at the site could remain. And political reaction to the judgment was muted. The Congress said it ought to be welcomed, but it added that aggrieved parties could go to the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, the RSS said the decision paved the way for a Ram temple to be built at the site. And in other news, the government wants to stop spending money on EPF accounts that are dead. It plans to close 30 million employee provident fund accounts not being used anymore. The move could save it 300 crores every year. Altogether, the accounts to be closed hold more than 15,000 crores. Back on the 15th, the government had announced it would not pay interest to EPF accounts that have been inoperative for three years. It also announced a one percentage point increase in the interest rate for EPFs to 9.5 percent. And on the economy, food inflation has accelerated in mid-September. The food price index shot up 16.44 percent in the week to the 18th. The previous week, it increased by 15.46. While this year's healthy monsoons were expected to bring down food prices, heavy rains have actually disrupted food supplies. The latest numbers are the second straight week of rise in the food price index since it was shifted to new weightings and a new base year of 2004 to 2005. Meanwhile, Mukesh Ambani is still India's richest man. Rankings produced by Forbes India show he has a net worth of $27 billion. Lakshmi Mittal comes in second with 26.1, and at a distant third is Wipro chairman Azim Premji, who's worth 17.6. Forbes says India has 69 billionaires this year. And in corporate, shares of Mahindra Satyam plummeted on Thursday after the company announced disappointing yearly numbers the previous day. On the BSE, its stocks fell 8.9 percent to 90 rupees and 10 pesi. And while Satyam shares are down, Indian markets are soaring. More foreign investment helped push the Sensex up 113 points to 20,069, and the Nifty shot up by close to 40 points to 6,030. And that's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching.